Hey everyone, I'm excited today because another model car contest is coming to town and I can't wait to show off my model and to catch up with old friends. Wow, Trevor, that sounds awesome. Yeah, Danny, I've entered many contests over the years and I've won gold, silver, bronze, and a few special category awards. Well, I've never entered a contest, but I sure would like to try. How do you build a model car for a contest? What are the judges looking for? Can you help me learn with some of your building secrets? Sure, Danny. It's really not that hard. Let's just take a look at the contest rules and see what the categories are and what the judges expect to see in our models. Okay, Danny. Here we have the contest category sheet for the upcoming Rocky Mountain Model Club Western Canadian Regional Model Contest for Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Ooh, looks like they have a category for everything. I see aircraft, military, automotive, ships, figures, sci-fi, collections, and even a youth category for the young puppies. Yes, Danny, this contest has a lot of categories. However, some other contests are strictly for one of these categories. For example, the annual Auto model Rama in Surrey, British Columbia is all about automotive models. We will look at their contest categories after we look at the ones from RRMC. Okay, so what do we have for the Rocky Mountain Model Club Contest? This list comes from 2021 and includes Road Cars Out of the Box, Road Cars Moderate, Road Cars Super Detail, Hot Rods and Customs, Competition Drag, Competition Open Wheel, Competition Close Wheel, Commercial 8 Wheels or Less, Commercial More Than 8 Wheels, Motorcycles, other scales, non 124th or 125th, so like 132nd and 148th and 116th, construction and farm equipment, and auto dioramas. Wow, that's a lot of categories. I count 14 in total. It sure is, Danny. But we should always check the most recent contest rules to see if anything has changed for this year's contest. If we look at the contest category sheet from 2023, we see a noticeable change. There are now seven categories and they are Road Car, Hot Rod and Custom, Competition Open Wheel, Competition Closed Wheel, Commercial, Motorcycles, and Auto Diorama. Wow, that's quite a drop. Do you think the categories are still as inclusive as in 2021? Like with Out of the Box, Moderate Detail, and Super Detail? I don't know, Danny. When in doubt, we can always talk to the event organizers. Send them an email or look at their website for an FAQ section, or even on their Facebook page. Sounds good. Hey Trevor, show me that other contest category sheet we saw earlier. Okay Danny, here's the contest category sheet for the 20th Annual Automotive Model Rama from 2003. I know it's over 20 years old, but it is the most recent one I have. However, you can see how focused it is on the automotive universe. Wow, it really covers pretty much everything. Yes, Danny, let's read the categories right off the sheet. Okay, Danny, here we have the seniors categories, and these are anyone age 19 and up. First off, we have the theme class, hot imports, performance import tuner cars, Honda, Acura, etc. So then our first actual regular class here is S1, out of the box. Only parts from a single kit can be used. Decals from another kit, flocking and foil, are acceptable. Engine wiring, scratch building, aftermarket parts, etc. are not acceptable. Second category is street rods, pre-1949 car body style. Then we have low riders. Custom must have body modifications done by the builder or by the kit manufacturer. Street machines, post-1948 vehicles. Street stock, pre-1966. Street stock, post-1965. Very minor modifications to factory vehicles such as wheel tire swaps and non-factory colors are allowed. Up here we have category S8, Light Commercial Municipal, 
any work vehicles such as pickups, vans, jeeps, sedan deliveries, flatbeds, etc. Includes emergency utility and municipal vehicles. Heavy commercial municipal. Typically heavy trucks with more than one axle. Competition curbside. Engine bay and undercarriage cannot be displayed. Intended for buildups of curbside resin and plastic race car kits. Competition open wheel. Competition closed wheel. Motorcycles, all scales. S14 is foreign exotic. Must be essentially stock in body configuration. Diorama. Must be of an automotive related theme and mounted on a permanent base. Large scale. All 1 16th scale and larger, except motorcycles, which must be in a class S3. Small scale, 1 32nd scale and smaller. Heavy duty trucks must be 1 48th scale or smaller. Curbside slammer, no engine. Hood must be molded or glued shut. Chassis, underside, cannot be displayed. Interior detail is optional. Black painted windows are okay. Military vehicles. Special interest. Miscellaneous catch-all category includes modified die cast, which must be repainted by the builder, TV, movie, cars, monster trucks, dune buggies, etc. So down here in this box, Danny, they have youths, and a youth is aged 14 to 18. Our first class is youth street vehicles. Second class is Youth Lowriders, Rods and Customs. Third class is Youth Competition Vehicles. Example, all types of race cars. And finally, we have our juniors, age 13 and under. And they have one class, all together in one category. That was quite extensive. There's something there for everyone. So how do we focus in on building for a particular category and what type of quality are the judges looking for? If we look here on the contest category sheet, it says that there is a rules package available which provides specific details for each class. The info above is used as a quick reference guide. Contest rules will be used to resolve any disputes. Oh, that explains things. Do you still have a copy of that rules package? Of course, Danny. Let's look at these one by one. This sheet is from 1991, but it should still be good for what we want to do. Let's start by reading the introduction at the top of the page before we delve into the class descriptions. Okay, read away. Contest rules. Automotive Model Builders, 16th Annual Auto Model Rama, March 14th, 1999, in Surrey, BC. We realize this is supposed to be a fun event. However, the very nature of a contest requires that a set of rules are established. The goal is to treat all contest entrants in a fair and unbiased manner. The rules have been designed based on those of the GSL Championship of Salt Lake City, Utah, considered by many to be the premium international model car contest. Whoa, the GSL? I've heard of that one. If this contest is like the GSL, then it's got to be good. Oh yes, Danny, I have won a few awards from this one, and there's a huge swap meet table and vendors area as well. Awesome, let's read more about those contest category classes. Okay, let's start with the first class out of the box and work our way through them all. We will also look at the RMMC class description in conjunction with the Automotive Model Builders classes. Okay, let's read out of the box street competition. Only parts from a single specific edition of an automotive model kit may be used. Each kit must be constructed in the manner intended by the kit manufacturer. No aftermarket parts are permitted except for chrome foil and flocking. No part swapping of any kind is permitted. No wiring, plumbing, antennas, photo etch parts, etc. are permitted except when included with the kit and shown on the instruction sheet. No parts can be created from kit sprue or putty. 
Molded on chrome trim, drip rails, handles, emblems, etc. cannot be removed. Only decals included with the kit can be used. Body panels cannot be opened hinged. Putty can be used to fill sink marks but not to alter the shape of parts or to make body modifications. Putty can be used to fill sink marks but not to alter the shape of parts or to make body modifications. Manufacturer logos and copyrights can be removed by sanding, etc. Parts can be drilled out to enhance their appearance such as exhaust tips, carburetor venturis, etc. but not to alter the basic shape of parts. Material can be removed to open up grills, etc. but not to change the basic shape of parts. Any painting or abrasive technique can be used to create surface textures. Chrome plated parts can be stripped and painted or replated by a plating service. Instruction sheets may have to be shown. In conjunction with this, RMMC clarifies the category rules by saying automobiles out of the box consists of anything you find only in the basic kit. Obviously, some manufacturers are more inclusive than others, but that's the brakes, right? Modified allows the addition of major detailing to only one area or minor additions to all areas on the kit. Detailed. This model looks like you could hop in and drive it away. Multiple sets or detailing was done to improve the kit. Additional notes. The other automobile categories, D to O, allow for detailing to the model if you wish. Well, I've got a few questions on the contest rules for the annual auto model Rama. Like here, it says uh, body panels cannot be opened and hinged. But what if you've got a model kit out of the box, like uh, the AMT 1956 Ford or something, that has opening doors? Well, Danny, it is kind of a little bit uh, of a gray area in that matter. But I think what they're saying is, if it comes out of the box and includes something like that, then you could use it. However, it's always good to contact the judges just for a second opinion. Oh yeah, that's always a good idea. So what about lowriders? Well, Danny, lowriders, it says, are self-explanatory. Vehicles can be of any vintage or style. The lower, the better. Oh, that's pretty cool. So now we'll look at rods and customs, which is right here. Customs include vehicles where the primary modifications are to the body shape and interior. Modifications range from mild, trim removal, custom paint and upholstery, to wild, chopping, channeling, sectioning, Frenching, lowering. Modifications can be made by the builder or by the kit manufacturer. Street rods include any pre-1949 vehicle that is essentially stock and body configuration and features a modified engine, chassis, suspension, interior, etc. Show cars are included in this class. Well, that's cool. I really like rods and customs. Yeah, Danny, me too. So let's check out street machines. This includes any pre-1949 vehicle that is essentially stock and body configuration and features a modified engine, chassis, suspension, interior, etc. Pro Street vehicles are included in this class. Well, those Pro Streets, I remember that back in the 90s. Those were a really cool thing, really trendy at the time. Yeah, Danny, and there are still kits out there being made by AMT and Ravel and Monogram that are still Pro Streets from that era. Oh, that's really cool. I like those. Okay, Danny, let's take a look at the next category, which is factory stock, pre-1949, post-1948. Now, this is a category I really like, and it includes any typical factory-built vehicle with modifications that were dealer options. Includes production vehicles that are modified by an aftermarket company or tuner, example, saline Mustang. Documentation must be provided to resolve disputes about the authenticity of the model. Light duty trucks includes vehicles based on a pickup, van, Jeep, sedan delivery or commercial delivery style of body and chassis. Excludes competition vehicles. Vehicles must be essentially stock and body configuration. El Caminos and Rancheros are considered as pickups. Includes soft-skinned military vehicles. Oh, I really like trucks, especially when we go out in the country and uh, get to jump out of the truck bed and go chase some sheep and things like that. Yeah, Danny, trucks are really cool. So let's continue here with heavy-duty trucks. Includes semi-tractor trailers, fire trucks, buses, earth-moving equipment, etc. Vehicles must be essentially stock and body configuration. 
includes soft skin military vehicles. Next up we have Competition Drag. Includes vehicles of any vintage or era intended for straight line or top speed competition. Examples include dragsters, funny cars, NHRA, Bonneville Speedsters. Oh wow, I really like those Bonneville salt flat racers. They're really cool. Have you seen that movie World's Fastest Indian? Yeah, Danny, I have. But uh, let's get back to the contest rules here. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Next we have Competition Open Wheel. Includes vehicles of any vintage or era. Examples include Formula One, kart, Indy cars, etc. that compete on circle tracks or road courses. Motorcycles are excluded. Oh, okay, so they only want the cars in this one. Yeah, Danny, that's right, just the open wheel cars. Oh, it doesn't look like there's too many categories left now. No, Danny, it looks like only about four. So here we have Competition Closed Wheel. Includes vehicles of any vintage or era. Examples include NASCAR, IROC, Can-Am, Trans-Am, rally cars, etc. that compete on circle tracks or road courses. Includes monster trucks configured for sanctioned competition. Motorcycles are excluded. Oh cool, monster trucks are in this category, but motorcycles are out. Yeah, that's right, Danny. But here we have motorcycles. Includes all motorcycles of any vintage or era. Includes trikes, drag bikes, etc. Oh cool, so if I build a motorcycle, I'm not left out of the contest. No, Danny, not at all. Here we have foreign, exotic, and prototype. Includes prototypes of any vehicle manufacturer. All non-prototypes must be from a vehicle manufacturer outside of North America and must be essentially stock and body configuration. Ooh, I have to do a little internet search to see what a foreign exotic prototype is. Yeah, me too, Danny. Let me know what you find out. Okay. Finally, we have dioramas. Must be of an automotive-related theme. Size restrictions may have to be enforced. Yeah, I guess if somebody comes in and he's got like a 22 by 36 foot layout, you know, for his diorama, might have a little bit of trouble putting that on a table. Yeah, Danny, I would say so. Wow, now I think I know everything about these categories and classes, but this doesn't answer my question on what are the judges looking for? Don't worry, Danny. The Rocky Mountain Model Club has a set of judging guidelines for model cars and trucks. I will also supplement this list with some things I read in AAM's pages. I think these ideas are pretty universal, but always check the rules with your local model show. Here's what the judges are looking for. Basic construction. A model is a winner only if it passes the basics. It will be easy to find the winners if you remove the ones that do not meet the basics. What are the basics? Well, Danny, the basics are that mold lines should be removed. This also means small parts and wheels. The chassis should be even and all wheels should be touching the ground. Clear parts should be free of any glue smears or fingerprints. Yeah, I'm really going to have to work on that one. Sometimes I get my paws all over the nice clean window and that never looks any good. No, no, Danny, I don't think it would. Um, paint should be free from p fingerprints and runs, and even paw prints in your case, Danny. Orange peel is a no-no. Overspray is only acceptable if the car is a rendition from a high school paint shop. That would make an interesting diorama. Yeah, <laughs> bend the rules a little bit and try to win that way, I suppose. Yeah, I know I'm just joking there, but yeah, that would be something. Okay, window frames and molding should be straight. Decals should be straight and without silvering. What is silvering? Well, Danny, silvering is when your decal, like, you know, there's a little transparent line around the decal. Oh yeah? Well, silvering is when you put that on the model and it ends up looking silver instead of clear because that edge is lifting off of the paint just by the slightest little degree, but it really shows. Oh, oh yeah, that would look really bad. Yeah, so let's get into the next part, finishing. All right, so here we are, finishing. Does the model look close to a scaled down real thing? Is the weathering done without going overboard? Oh yeah, sometimes I've seen models where the weathering just looks like they just took the car and covered it in mud and it doesn't even look realistic, it's just covered. Yeah, yeah, I've seen stuff like that too, Danny. Maybe even worse, I don't know. 
Okay, let's get into engines. If the engine is wired, it should be in the right sequence. Plumbing should go to the correct locations. Engine exhaust should be correctly attached to the motor. Correct thickness of wires and plumbing should be observed. Well, how are they going to know, like, what the engine wiring sequence should be? Like, let's say I've got a, uh, a Ford big block or something in one of my models, and then I got another model that's got a Dodge Hemi in it or something like that. How are the judges going to, like, know if it's in the right firing order? Well, Danny, there's two ways to do that. One is to provide a picture of the firing order and then wire your engine in there. Or the other is, you know, maybe just wire it the way you want and uh, hope that the judges don't know their engine wiring. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a thought. But, you know, I would, uh, I would try to aim for perfection on that, you know, if you're going to go that way. Yeah, that's always better, right? I think so. Okay, Danny, here's another topic for you that I'm sure you're going to be asking me a question about in a second, but it is interiors. Are they a correct replication of the original? Do, do the colors correspond? Seatbelts, it's the law. Now hang on a minute, seatbelts. Now, I can see that in a modern car like anything post-1972, and maybe some of the 50s Fords, but like, are they going to try to make me put seat belts into, like, say, that model of the 1930 Packard? Because they never had those in that. Well, again, Danny, I, I don't know. I mean, they're looking for the seat belts because it's the law. But um, I, I think, again, if something never came with them, I don't think they're going to make you put them in there. But always check with the judges and the uh, runners of the contest. Oh yeah, that would make the most sense. All right, so what's next? Well, here we have tires. The first question is, are they round? <laughs> Don't laugh, Danny. Is the lettering done correctly and seam removed? Oh yeah, yeah, we should be doing that for sure. Oh, of course. Okay, overall, judging automobiles is usually the toughest. When in doubt, check for proper information regarding the car. Don't be afraid to consult with other judges. Good luck, and remember that we provide security for the judges. Oh yeah, that's pretty funny, security for the judges. Yeah, Danny, well, you know, some people do get upset when uh, their model doesn't win. Oh yeah, I've seen that at shows too. Not pretty, especially when this is just supposed to be for fun. Yeah, for sure. You know, usually in these kind of situations, if I don't, like, win or whatever, after the show, I talk to the judges and I ask them, you know, what do I need to do to improve my model for next year? Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. And then they give me some hints. So then when I go next year, I remember something like, oh, okay, got to remember this about tires, for example, right? Yeah, yeah, that's really good. So then the next year I correct out the tires and then I go up in, uh, you know, the ranking as far as judges go. And then maybe the next year I might actually win because I took care of the tires because I asked the judges the year before, hey, what's wrong with this model? Well, that's a wonderful idea. Then you're not getting confrontational and you're actually learning something. Yeah, for sure, Danny. And I encourage everybody out there to try the same. Yeah, that's really good. So what are the uh, tips from the other contest that you want to read? Okay, Danny, let's take a look at those. All right, Danny, so in this section here, model eligibility and classification, I was looking in and a lot of it's sort of like the RRMC thing here, but right here, number four, the intention is to reward and encourage individual craftsmanship. Each model must be built exclusively by the entrant. Entries built by partnerships, committee, or contract construction, or using pre-painted bodies are ineligible. Entrants may use aftermarket parts and chrome-plated services, except where prohibited by a category definition. Okay, so their intention is to reward and encourage individual craftsmanship. Is that the point you're trying to make? Yes, Danny, that is the point I'm trying to make. That they want to have these contests to basically reward the builder on how well they have built their model. Oh, I see. That's really good. And finally, right down here in this section 4, this is under judging. It says the success of the contest depends on the personal integrity and good faith of everyone involved. Oh yeah, that is a really good point. 
I want to make sure that I'm a good player in this contest as well as a good builder. Yeah, that's the spirit, Danny. Always be good to others. Here is another point, Danny. If you have won a model contest with these guys before and you want to bring the same model back, it says previous winners are ineligible. Any model that placed first, second, third in a category or won a Best of Show award at any previous AMB, Auto Model Rama, must be retired from this competition. Oh, okay. Well, this is my first contest, so I don't have to worry about that. No, Danny, but I might have to, and that's why I always try to keep records of what I entered and what year I entered the model in. Well, that's a really good idea. Then that way, you won't get caught off guard either when you enter in an old kit, thinking it's a new kit, and then the judges say, uh, yeah, you entered that two years ago. Yeah, that's right, Danny. That could happen. Oh yes, Danny, one other thing to remember is to always read the entirety of these booklets because sometimes there's important information on them that uh, you really need to know, like contest registration deadline is 11.30 a.m. So if you come at 12, you won't be able to put your model in this contest, for example. Oh, that would be really sad because I really want to try my first contest. Well, Danny, that's why you always have to read these things to make sure you know what's going on. Also, there's things like judging and pre-finished, pre-painted models, if they can be entered or not, and directions to the show down here. Oh, yeah, directions to the show. <laughs> I mean, you can't live without that, right? Like, where would you go? Walk around with holding on your models going, hey, where's the show? Yeah, exactly, Danny. So you need to read this stuff, but we won't go into it like in this video because those are sort of things that should be on the poster and on the website or wherever else. Also like registration, how you do registration. Do you have to print something out from online and fill it in? Or can you just walk in and fill out a sheet? Or can you do both? Oh well, yeah, you really got to know that as well. Yep, yeah, for sure. So always read these things, Danny, and don't miss a single sentence. Oh yes, sir. Well, Danny, I think that covers basically everything we need to know. Thank you for reading all of that, Trevor. I feel like I know what I'm doing now, but I think I still need some help with actually building a contest quality model car. Well, what do you want to know? Well, how do I pick out a good quality model car to use as an entry? Should I build something right out of the box, or should I try to go super detailed? Can you help me with this? Sure, Danny, I can help you out. I have enough models to build that can cover a few of those contest categories and classes. Oh boy, I can't wait! In the next video, we can start by building a winning out-of-the-box model car. Now, out-of-the-box is a great category for people that are just new to a model car contest because basically you just build the model right out of the box and there's no extra details like engine wiring or anything else that could interrupt or cause problems with your model car build. Something that needs extra thinking and extra time. So out of the box is quite easy because it's very simple. You just grab a model, build it right out of the box following the instructions, do the best you can, and then enter it in the contest. Yeah, I'd like that, Trevor. Curbside is also a great category to enter if your model car contest has it, because it's basically like building out of the box except you don't need to build an engine or have an opening engine bay to display an engine in. Basically, you just build the model out of the box, and a lot of kits that are curbside are much like this kit from Fujimi. So you're basically building the body, the chassis, and the interior, but the hood is basically molded in place, and there is no engine or engine bay. So there are a few options with out of the box then. Of course, Danny, and we will take a look at those in this video right here. Oh boy, I can't wait! So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video. Sure, Danny, I can help you out. I have enough models back here to build to cover a few of those con- look at that. 
Sure, Danny, I can help you out. I have enough models that I can build something for a few of the suggested categories and classes. Yeah, I'd like that. In the next video, we can... In the next video, we can start by building a winning model car. In the next video, we can start by building a winning out-of-the-box model car. Now, this would be a good starting point for people that are new to... In the next video, we can start by building an... In the next video, we can start by building a winning... <laughs> oh, my neck. In the next video, we can start by building a winning model car. In the next video... In the next video, we can start... In the next video, we can start by building a winning out-of-the-box model car kit. Now, this is a good starting... F of course, Danny, and we will look at those in this next video coming up right here. So, until next time, everybody, Happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.